Welcome back. In the last video we talked about arterial blood gas analysis and pulse oximeters and how those technologies are used to measure oxygen saturation and carbon dioxide concentrations in our blood. What we'll do in this video is going next to go for the next top point, which is related to blood itself because it actually says compare the structure of arteries, capillaries and veins in relation to a function. But before we go into this top point, what I'll do first is I'll give you a quick analogy or a quick comparison of our body compared to a city, city life itself. So what we have here is a picture of Sydney. And this is a CBD and then obviously you have your suburbs close to it. And this is our body itself. So the comparison I'll make is in a city you have millions of people living. So you've got millions of people. Whereas in our body we have millions of cells. So both living things, just in this case, in terms of the city, its people, and in terms of our body, its cells. Now in terms of the actual transport, we have kilometers of roads or streets, so kilometers of streets that connect people in cities. And we have kilometers of blood vessels in our body. So, and they have the same purpose, to connect cells to, and to supply them with different substances. And we've got forms of transport. So this would be, for example, our truck or car. Or we could go by foot. This would be, when it comes to city, we can have these different forms of transport. And when it comes to our blood and our body, we have red blood cells. We can have oxygen and carbon dioxide traveling red blood cells. We could have the chylomicrons. And if you remember, chylomicrons transport lipids. Or stuff could just be dissolved in plasma itself. So we, have, we can really compare sea life with our body. It's very active in general. And to make sure that everything is supplied, we have these kilometers of blood vessels. We actually have literally kilometers of them in, in our body. And what I'll do quickly is go over what blood vessels are. So blood vessels is a general term. So if, for example, we say streets, that could be, that's a very general term as well. Streets could be a highway, it could be a side street, it could be a dent end street. A street is a general term, just like blood vessels is a general term as well. But within blood vessels, we have three different types of blood vessels. These are the arteries. These are the main ones in our body. Arteries, veins, and capillaries. And we've got here our arteries here. Arteries are quite, arteries are like our highway. They're usually quite thick and they transport stuff at really high speeds, but they don't actually transport stuff directly to our, our homes or in the case of our body, our cells. It's the capillaries that do that. The capillaries are a lot smaller, but they have access to all cells. So next to capillaries are all our cells, just like next to our, our side streets are all our homes. And then veins are again, similar to highways, they're very big and they transport stuff back to our heart. So blood vessels is a general term, and within blood vessels we have arteries, capillaries, and veins, and these make up something called our circulatory system. And it's called circulatory system because everything moves in circles. It gets pumped from our heart to our legs, arms, and legs, and then the blood returns to our heart again, so it all moves in a circle. So when it comes to stop point, what we have to do is we have to compare these blood vessels to the arteries, capillaries, and veins. We have to compare them, in terms of their structure, so what kind of structure do they have, and relate the structure to their function. So that's what we'll do now. So when it comes to arteries, arteries carry blood away. So A for away, so arteries, and you can imagine that A stands for away because arteries carry blood away from the heart. What that means is when the actual heart pumps, this is meant to be the heart here, when that pumps, and blood just leaves the actual heart, it will be carried in the vein when it goes away from the heart. These are the capillaries, and it will return to the heart through veins. So it is, it leaves the heart through arteries and returns through veins. So a couple of the different, fun, uh, the actual structure we have to compare, so we have to compare the structure of arteries and relate it to its function. So for example, they have very thick walls, 
arteries do. And the reason why is because they have to withstand high pressure. So the function of arteries is they have to actually be able to withstand high pressure. And can, you can imagine why? Because the heart itself is like a pump. And you can imagine anything pumping would apply a lot of pressure. So if these arteries have to, that have to handle all that blood, if they are not strong enough, they would actually rupture. And if they rupture, then we have lots of holes in our arteries. So they have to have thick walls. And you can see they do have these thick walls. So these are the walls here of our arteries. Right here, these are our walls. They're very thick. And that's to be able to withstand the high pressure. And they also have a thick elast thick elastin layer. And this elastin layer is also, so where the, so it says muscle, so the muscular wall and elastin. And it's also this middle layer has this elastin layer. And what that does, elastin is like rubber. So you can imagine elastin to be a bit like rubber. It can change the shape. It can make the actual blood, so the arteries change the shape. And the reason why is because it has to increase in size when the heart beats and it has to pop back into place when the heart relaxes. And obviously, if the heart beats, we're going to pump a lot of blood into vessels. So they have to be really big in size. And once this relaxes, there's less blood in the actual arteries as to go back to, to its normal shape. So it'll be normal. And then when the, this is when the heart beats, it'll be a lot bigger. It'll jump into a massive size. And that's when it beats. And then it'll return to normal. So this is at a at beat. It's changed its size. The last layer has allowed it to go bigger. And it'll pop back into place once it's relaxed. So we go from normal to, to big and then to normal again. And that elastin layer allows it to do that, that thick elastic layer, which is in the actual wall itself. And then the arteries also have a, a medium-sized lumen. And because it's medium, it actually allows blood to move very fast. They don't have to carry too much blood usually. They're just going to make sure they carry it really fast to make sure it gets to all the rest of the body. And having a, that medium-sized lumen compared to veins, veins have a much larger lumen. But they have a medium-sized lumen, which allows them to do that. So that was for arteries, so a thick muscular wall, thick last, last layer, and a medium-sized lumen. The veins, on the other hand, they carry blood to the heart. So that's their, so they carry blood to the heart, whereas arteries carry blood away from the heart. For the veins, they have a very thin wall. So you can see the wall here, which was this part here. So I'll make it in red. This part here is a lot thinner in a vein compared to an artery. And the reason why is because they have to withstand a little pressure. Veins don't get anything pumped into them. They don't have to be able to withstand that much pressure. So their actual wall is a lot thinner. They also have a very thin elastic layer or elastin layer. And the reason is the same reason why they have a thin muscular wall because they don't have to change, change the shape a lot. They don't deal with heartbeats as much as arteries do. So they don't have to be able to change from big to small. They can just stay the same size the whole time. So they don't need to have a big elastin layer because yeah, they can just stay that same shape. They have a large lumen. So a large lumen refers to this size here, the, the diameter, how much blood can flow through it. And large lumen means we can have large amounts of blood flowing through. And when you look at this picture here, you can see the arteries branch off in these capillaries. These were the capillaries here. And then the blood returns at a lot slower pace. There's going to be lots of blood in the actual veins. And by having a large lumen, it allows to have lots of blood in it, be able to bring it back. So large lumen allows for lots of blood flow. It doesn't have to move fast. It has to just be able to carry lots of it. And they also have these things which only these, from these three, only the veins have. And these are the valves. Because valves prevent blood uh, prevent blood to flow backwards because when it comes to veins if you think about it, it has to move against gravity, it has to move back up so here it's moving back up to bring it back to the heart and how is it, how is it going to do that if it has no way of actually making sure that blood can't, can't flow backwards and the way it actually can do that is it has these valves which once blood passes so once plus blood passes through it it will shut, so here it's shut, so you can't have any backflow. So it will only go one way. And valves yeah, allow veins to be able to control its blood flow to make sure it doesn't go backwards. And that's for only veins. Now capillaries, these were the smallest ones. So capillaries were tiny, and these tiny ones here. And they carry blood through the cells. 
So these are the ones which branch off. To make sure that every single cell in our body has these has nutrients, so they bring all nutrients to our cells. So here we have they have very thin walls, so these capillaries have very thin walls, and this is there to make sure that diffusion can happen. So what I mean by that is that these substances here, for example, the yellow one might be glucose and the blue one might be oxygen, so that they can go into cells at the capillaries, diffuse over. So if this membrane here, this red one here, if that were too thick, nothing could happen. But because it's so thin, that it allows it to actually pass in and out, and the carbon dioxide can pass back out again. So all this happens because we have a thin wall, very thin wall. And also, it's only one, the actual lumen itself, so the lumen, which was this one here, this here, is only big enough to fit one red blood cell. So it's one red blood cell thick. And the reason why is because it slows down the movement. You don't want to have anything moving too fast here because remember, you want to have stuff be able to diffuse into cells and carbon dioxide diffuse out of cells. If the blood is moving too fast, then diffusion can't happen because diffusion takes a bit of time. So by having only one cell thick, you can only have very few things fitting through, and that slows down traffic. So things move a bit slower to make sure that things can move in and out as they should. Right. So this is where the, we compare the structure and how those structures relate to function. So we say that the artery is a thick muscular wall, which allows it to be able to stand high pressure. It has a thick elastin layer, which allows it to pop back into place once the heart is relaxed, and really increase in size once the heart is actually pumped. It has a medium-sized lumen, and allows it to have fast movement of blood. So the movement of blood is really fast. It doesn't have to carry that much. It has to make sure it moves really fast. That's for the arteries. The veins carry blood to the heart. And they have a thin muscular wall. And the reason why is there's not much pressure left. There's no pumping there. It's just moving backwards to the heart. The thin elastin layer is there because it doesn't have to be able to change back into shape. So it doesn't really have to be able to um, change the shape. So that elastic layer would just be, have to be thin as opposed to large and thick. Large lumen because that's be able to carry lots of blood back to the to the heart itself, and also it has these valves which prevent blood from flowing backwards. Capillaries are very are very thin, have a very thin wall because they make sure that all the cells get the nutrients and they can diffuse over all the carbon dioxide back into blood. And they're only one, so the lumen is only one red blood cell thick, so and that slows down the movement, so things can actually have time for it to diffuse in and out. And also for the dot point, make sure you know how to draw, how you can draw, so draw and label, draw and label these basic things. So for example, know where the uh, muscle and so the thick muscle wall and the last layer is, that's the middle part. Know where the lumen is, which is the middle part. And those are the main important parts. So be able to label them in an exam or draw the basic structure. I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.